Hello, AP Calculus students. It's a hot summer day, and we are looking at uh, episode T of the Summer Packet uh, tutorial series here. It's Mr. Ford, and uh, this one is one that I secretly love, but most people do not enjoy. Uh, it's trigonometric identities. It's a thing walking out of pre-calc, you might be thinking, there's no way I could possibly do another year of that. I have good news for you. This is not of much use for us in AP Calc, and honestly, 99% of the time, if I need a trig identity to solve a problem, I'm just going to Google it. And this will not be on your AP Calculus test in any way. However, like most math problems, maybe if we're talking about the spirit of mathematics, maybe if we're not talking about necessarily preparing for a course or preparing for a degree or something, but just like the spirit of being a problem solver. Uh, oftentimes, a, a good strategy for solving any problem is to reframe it a different way or rewrite it or look at one side of the equation in, in an equivalent form. And that's what tray identities allow us to do. And that is useful in a lot of trigonometric situations. It is useful a handful of times in calculus, and that's why we're talking about it today. Now, um, I have gone on the internet and I have found this PNG file of several different trig identities. Um, you might be looking at this and going, holy crap, that's a lot. The good news is most of these you don't know, or most of these you don't need at all. Um, in fact, the only ones that I ever recommend anybody ever memorize are the Pythagorean identities. I'm going to cover my face up right, you know, uh, the ones that are um, the sine squared plus cosine, cosine squared equals one, and its equivalent forms. Um, those are the ones that you probably should be aware of the most and maybe these basic ones on the very top because those are essentially what they are. We probably won't use anything on this sheet other than those um, if, and if we do we have the sheet here so we might make use of it. The other thing about these kind of problems is that they are proofs which means that the problem is actually given to you I mean like the answer is here you will be able to answer it. Um, all you have to do is prove that it's true so it's not so much that we're actually finding an answer to an equation. We're just showing, demonstrating that something is true because they're telling us it's true and we just want to verify it. That's why the word verify is right here. So we're going to use a lot of common substitution tricks. Um, now, one thing about this is that since we are only allowed to verify this is true, we are not allowed to do anything to both sides of this equation because it's not proven true yet. We don't know that this is equal. We are uh, sent here to prove that it's equal. So our job is a little tougher because we aren't allowed to uh, multiply or divide on both sides or any of that usual stuff. However, um, we can work with this 1 plus sine x times 1 minus sine x. That's a pattern we've seen many times throughout this series, and you'll see it a lot in calculus too. And when you multiply those together, distribute, we used to call it FOIL back in the day. First, outside, inside, last. I suspect you have a math teacher who probably did still say that. We, now we talk about distributive property, but if you were to multiply these together, you'll get 1 times 1, which is 1. You'll get, I'm going to write it out for the sake of this, you'll get a plus sine x and a minus sine x, and that's the key pattern here. Those actually just cancel out. In fact, I'm going to erase them because I don't need them. Um, however, you will have a positive sine times a negative sine. That's going to be a minus sine squared of x, and we are sent here to confirm that this is, in fact, equal to the cosine of x. Okay, well, if you ever have a 1 involved in one of these problems and a sine squared or a cosine squared or something like that, now it's time to use your trigonometric, or your, sorry, your Pythagorean identities, which again, you can maybe barely see down right below. I made that picture kind of small. Actually, the more I think about it, the ones we need are the ones on top anyway. So maybe I can just make this bigger. Stand by, make that bigger, and I'm just going to put those important ones right there. So if we're looking at the Pythagorean identities, the only one you should ever memorize, I'm actually going to put at the top of this page, sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is equal to 1. It can be easily verified by drawing any right triangle on the Pythagorean theorem. That's, that's the way this works. It's called the Pythagorean identity because it is the Pythagorean theorem. Remember, sine is the vertical part of the triangle and cos cosine is the horizontal part. So there's that. Now, of course, we can do a lot of algebra with this. This also means that sine squared is equal to 1 minus the cosine squared. And it also means that cosine squared is equal to 1 minus the sine squared, because if you do a couple simple algebra steps, that's where you end up. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that substitution. Boom. 1 minus sine squared is equal to the cosine squared. We are done with this problem, my friends. Cosine squared does, in fact, equal cosine squared, and we are done. QED is a thing you may or may not have learned from your math teacher, no matter depending on how nerdy they are. 
QED is uh, short for the Latin phrase quad eret demonstratum. It might be quat. I can't remember that. I don't know. I don't, don't know Latin. All I know is that that loosely translates to that's what I wanted to show. So there you go. QED. I proved it. Number two, we got secant squareds. We got tangent squareds. Again, we're going to call upon our uh, trigonometric identities down below to help us solve this particular problem. Um, again, if you're looking at that list of trigonometric problems, you probably see the sine squared and the cosine squared and the tangent. Uh, uh, the sine, uh, the <laughs> sorry, stand by. Got a little brain fart for a moment. You probably see the Pythagorean identities down below underneath sine squared and cosine squared. That's what I wanted to say. Now, here's the thing. If, if this is true up here, let's go back up to this basic one right here. If you were to divide, let's say, oh man, where do I get room on this one? Let's say you were to take sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Let me draw a line here. Let's say you were to divide everything in this problem by sine squared of x. Might be a weird thing to do, but here's the thing. Watch what happens. You get one for sine squared over sine squared. Cosine over sine is the cotangent. 1 plus the cotangent squared of x equals 1 over the sine, which we call the cosecant squared of x. If you do that same trick, again, take the original sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals 1, and you divide everything by the cosine squared of x. Well, sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared. Cosine over cosine is 1, and 1 over cosine is the secant squared. This is the one that we'll be using for this problem. It's only one algebra step. Oh, shoot, my picture is in the way. Well, we will move this over. We'll, we'll call upon these as we need them, I suppose. So anyway, now that we got that little jump out of the way, that's exactly what we're going to do here. We are going to replace the secant squared on the left side with 1 plus the tangent squared. And honestly, a lot of times in these problems, you just kind of go for it. You just try something. Uh, there are usually other ways to do this problem. This one is pretty much done, though, because 1 plus 3 is 4. And so we're done. <laughs> tangent squared of x plus 4 is, in fact, equal to the tangent squared of x plus 4. So this is done. Again, QED. We show that they're the same. Only one or two steps. So a lot of times, these are only one or two steps because the mathematical skill, what I want you to know as math students, is just like, okay, how can I rewrite this? How can I reframe it so that it makes sense? And luckily in this case, you got two sides of the equation to work with. So it's kind of like a multiple choice question where you have the question and then the possible answers. So you can kind of build a bridge logically through the middle there. That's the way a lot of these work. All right, um, let's go ahead and go to the next one. Okay, here we got a division problem. One minus secant over one minus cosine. You know, oftentimes with problems like this, the best way to handle this is to write all anything, anything that's not a sine or a cosine, write it as a sine or a cosine. That's going to make this problem more complicated at first, but I think you'll see pretty quick how it develops. So um, the other thing is since we're trying to prove that the left side equals the right side, we are not going to touch the right side. We're not going to. We might if we need to, we might, but we're not going to. So in my first step here, all I'm going to do is replace that secant with 1 over cosine because that's what it is. I'm going to leave the other part the same. And we're seeing if we're proving this is equal to the negative secant of x. Now that seems like I made the problem more complicated, and, and it's true. But the objective here is to try to get everything kind of by itself uh, or try to combine these, this, this subtraction thing into one idea and hopefully that idea will be equal to the negative secant. Um, so the next step, the, the next step I think, is to um, turn that one on the top of the fraction into cosine over cosine, so we can combine the subtraction on top. So let's do that next. The one becomes the cosine of x over the cosine of x, and everything else stays the same. Minus one over cosine of x over. 1 minus cosine of x, and again, we're checking to see if this is equal to the negative secant of x. Now again, this seems like I made it more complicated, but what's nice about this is I can combine this now into one idea. Um, cosine minus 1 over cosine of x. 
And how about this? How about instead of dividing it by 1 minus cosine x, let's multiply it by 1 over 1 minus cosine of x. Again, we're checking to see if that's equal to the negative secant of x. Well, it's really close. You might notice cosine x minus 1. Let me highlight in blue here. Cosine x minus 1 and 1 minus cosine x, they're really, really close. You might even go back and check your work and make sure you didn't make a math mistake and go like, man, I really want those to cancel out. Because if they did cancel out, we'd be really close to the answer because we need 1 over cosine. That's secant. That's what we're trying to show. What we want to show is that that's actually negative 1 when those um, divide out. This is a common trick we do a lot in calculus, and I'll show it to you right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top of the left term fraction. I'm going to factor out a negative 1. I'm just going to factor out negative 1. To do that, I have to change the sign of both of the original inside parts. Um, and I'm also going to change their order. See that minus 1 right there? I'm going to change that to plus 1. And I'm going to change this plus cosine x into minus cosine x. And if you really think about it, these are the same. Let me get rid of the other blue highlighter. Those two blue ideas are the same. Cosine x minus 1 is equal to negative 1 times 1 minus cosine x. We do that a lot. It's a really handy trick for canceling something out when it's almost the same thing. And again, I'm... Uh, So now you actually do get the canceling out that you want. And you're pretty much done at this point because the 1 minus cosine of x cancels out and you get negative 1 over cosine of x. And this is true. Negative 1 over the cosine, that is the negative secant of x. I would circle this and call it done and put QED at the bottom of it. I'll give you a second to pause and uh, really ponder what all the stuff that happened in that problem. A lot of things. It's worth mentioning that I, I do have an answer guide on, on the other monitor that I'm looking at right now, and it has an entirely different solution. There are all different ways to do this problem. The other the answer guide solution involves changing everything to a secant, and I don't like that. I, I think it's easier if you keep everything as a sine or a cosine. A strategy that we're going to do is right away on number four also. Let's go ahead and get to it. <coughs> Again, we are here to prove this is equal to one. It doesn't look like it should be. Uh, you could, I suppose, test this right away by grabbing any number for x and plugging it in and running it through a calculator and confirming that you do, in fact, get 1. Um, but let's go ahead and change everything in here to a sine and a cosine. Let's start there. Again, we're going to need lots of room for this, so give yourself some space. I think when you do the sine-cosine trick, a lot of times a strategy presents itself to you. But as is the case with most advanced math problems, that first step is often on your part, a choice. You have to choose to do something. And then as you work through it, you realize what you did right or wrong. It's that choice that is the hardest part, in my opinion. So we are changing the tangent in the first term to sine over cosine, and we're going to change the cotangent to cosine over sine. We are, again, seeing this is equal to 1. So we did two substitutions just now. We just changed those things right there. Uh, next, you might be, um, you might already see it, we're going to combine the fractions together on the bottom. Basically, the idea here is this. This is two big things being added together. We need it to all be one thing. Because if it's going to all equal one, we want it to be one big fraction with the same thing on the top and the bottom. And so we're going to combine these two big fractions together. So we need common denominators for all that. And so let's, let's go ahead and get to it. On the left term, we're going to change that one into uh, cosine over cosine. We're going to leave the sine of x over cosine of x, exactly the way it was, plus 1 over. Uh, this time we are going to change the other 1, this time into sine of x over sine of x, since we want it to add together with cosine of x over sine of x. And again, th this should all be equal to 1. Okay, so what we're going to have here, let's be careful about how we're going to write this all out. We have 1 over cosine plus sine over cosine plus 1 over sine plus cosine over sine. And it's worth mentioning that these are the same. Uh, cosine plus sine and sine plus cosine are the same. I probably, if I could go back and write this again, I probably would write them the same way too because that's, that's important. We're almost there. The only thing we need to do here is, well, Oh, actually, no, we are done. We're done with this problem. Let me show you what's going to happen here. 
Um, both of these fractions, <laughs> sorry, I get excited. You might be like, what? We're not even close to being done. Okay, so both of these are fractions. It's one over something. I'm gonna just kind of draw a fob on the left hand side. When you have one over a over b, this is equal to b over a. You can just flip that fraction. We're gonna do that right now. We're gonna take these two fractions and we're gonna flip them. We're gonna take the, put the cosine of x on top and we're gonna have, I'm gonna go change the order on this one to sine plus cosine. And you'll see it right away. Because if we do that same trick on the bottom, or on the, on the right term, the sine of x comes to the top and look what your denominator is. Sine of x plus cosine of x. And uh, you actually can combine these together because they are the same denominator. And look at what you have when you're done. You have sine of x plus cosine of x over sine of x plus cosine of x. And that is, in fact, equal to 1, my friends. Q-E-D. We got it. Nice. See, I told you that big list of formulas that I showed you at the beginning of this video, you don't need them for anything. Nobody does. Well, you do every once in a while. They're useful. They're useful here and there. But you know what you do? You look them up in a book or you Google it. You Google, hey, is there an identity for this? And some book will show you what the identity is. Let's try two more of these. Oh, the dreaded cosecant. Okay, the cosecant of 2x. This is going to make things problematic. Uh, here's where we're going to need our, our list of formulas because with cosecant of 2x, oof. What we're going to do here is we're going to, hmm, <laughs> so let's bring out the list of formulas here. <laughs> what we're going to need is a what's called a double angle identity, and I'll try my best to zoom those in. I, don't, I can't draw on this picture, so I'm just going to put those on the front of the screen there, front center. We're going to use a double angle identity for this. You'll notice that we do not have a, C, a cosecant on here, but we do have a sine, and cosecant is nothing more than 1 over the sine. So we're going to use the sine of 2 theta. Uh, the only thing worth noting here is that cosine of 2 theta actually has like three different forms. Um, but we will not need that for this problem. So again, I'm going to kind of, uh, I wish I could keep just that one in front of me, but I guess not. It's okay. Make this smaller. Get it out of here. Okay. So we're using our double angle identities. I'll try to keep them. I don't know if that's even going to be visible on YouTube, but hey, who knows. Okay. So cosecant of 2x. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to on the left side, I'm going to write this as 1 over the sine of 2x. That's the first thing, because since cosecant is 1 over sine, I think I'm also going to do the same trick on the right side. I'm going to rewrite everything as a sine or a cosine. Always a good idea. So um, on the right side, I'm going to rewrite that cosecant as 1 over the sine of x divided by 2 cosine of x. Actually, this one's pretty much done, if you know the, if you know the pattern. So uh, the formula that you can go look up on the internet or go see in that sheet that I have on the very bottom of the screen, sine of x is equal to 2 times the sine of x times the cosine of x. That is the identity that we'll be using here. So uh, let's get to it. So on the left side, we have 1 over 2 sine of x cosine x. And that is equal to, look what happens here. We have 1 over the sine of x times 1 over 2 cosine of x. You see, that's another common trick. Instead of dividing, I'm going to multiply by 1 over this thing. That's it. And this is done because those are the same thing. I, I Again, I'm not even going to simplify it. QED, they're the same. It's If you multiply, you get you get the sine, you have the 2, and you have the cosine on the right side. That's it. It's a thinly veiled problem. Okay, number 6 might be the one that's going to cause us the most problems because it's got a, it's got a bunch of stuff happening here. Um, we're not going to touch the right side of the equation. I believe. We're just going to work with cosine of 3x over x. Um, I'm going to take one algebra step right in the front of this. I'm going to rewrite that cosine of 3x as the cosine of 2x plus x. This is this might be a one where you're just kind of like at home working through this and you're like, okay, I'm just going to follow the steps that Mr. Ford has in this video because you, uh, this is one that is, a, this is probably the most advanced that we can get with this. Okay, so what we're going to need here is what's called a sum or difference formula uh, right here on the top. Um, I'm going to write it for you in a minute. When you have cosine, usually we use alpha and beta for this. It doesn't really matter, though. If you have the cosine of two things being added together, and I'm going to try to bring these on the front screen, too, so in the front of this so you can see them. A sum and difference identities, right there. Again, you may or may not have encountered these along the way. Um, they come in two flavors, cosine and sine. And um, there's a typo there. The tangent one is at the bottom. Uh, let's see if I can draw an arrow right now to what I'm looking at. 
Yes. I can't draw an arrow onto the diagram, but I can at least point you in the direction where your eye should go. So sine and cosine is how that works. Now we currently have the cosine. Looks like they've used theta and phi here. That's fun. Doesn't matter. Um, it's the cos. Now according to this, if I have the cosine of something plus something, see how see the plus or minus sign there? That would be the cosine of the first times the cosine of the second minus. See how the plus minus sign on the left is a minus plus sign on the right? Minus the sine of the first times the sine of the second. So what that means for us, let me get this out of the way. So cosine of alpha plus beta is cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. So that's going to be our preliminary step here. We are going to do this operation with uh, 2x for alpha and x for beta. There's a reason why we're going to do that too because cosine of 2x has a bunch of different flavors that we can use too. So we'll get to that in just a minute. So doing that multiplication, here's what we're going to have. We got cosine of 2x times the cosine of x minus the sine of 2x times the sine of x. This is all over the cosine of x. We are trying to show that this is equal to 1 minus 4 sine squared x. Interesting. Okay. Well, my first instinct with this top mess of this fraction is to um, be able to factor out a cosine. I can't do it right now, uh, but that would be what I'm thinking. That. I'm thinking we can be able to, because I notice this is a fraction on the left and not a fraction on the right, so I want to cancel that cosine out that's there. To do that, we're going to have to use a couple more trig identities. One we've already used in this video, sine of 2x, which I'm just going to remind you, we already know from the previous problem, that sine of 2x is equal to 2 sine x cosine x. Um, that will give us our sine squared we're looking for, and it will also give us the cosine to factor out. So that'll be nice when we plug it in right there. Cosine of 2x, though. Cosine of 2x actually has three different forms. Um, because, I'm going to bring it up to the, actually, can I move this to the bottom? Stand by. Oh, perfect. Well, kind of. Oh, almost. Oh, I can almost barely fit it in there. Shoot, okay, bring it back to the top. I'm going to cover me up for a minute. Cosine of 2x actually comes in three flavors because it is the cosine squared minus the sine squared. Specifically, cosine minus sine. Um, this means that you can replace the uh, cosine squared or the sine squared with one of those trig identities from up above. Remember that cosine squared is equal to 1 minus the sine squared. And sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine squared. So there are some ways you can combine these together uh, and, and get different forms. That's where the three forms come from. We're going to have to choose wisely, though. I think we're going to use the form that has the sine squared, because we need 4 sine squared in this problem. Now, if I'm thinking carefully, if we do this substitution over here with the sine of 2x, that will give us um, 2 sine and cosine. That's 2 sine squared. So that's 2 of the sine squareds that we need. Um, let me get this out of the way now. Can't see my face. There I am. Um, with on the right, though, we are going to need, let's see, I don't need, I want to factor that cosine out. I want to factor this one out. So I think I'm going to convert cosine of 2x into its pure sine squared form. Uh, so doing that substitution, cosine of 2x is equal to 1 minus sine squared minus sine squared. And that is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared x, which we can confirm on our sheet. Just one more time, I'm going to bring it to the top. Uh, that is one of these, the third one on the list of double angle identities for cosine of 2 theta. We'll be using that one. So let's go ahead and do that substitution. We're going to replace the cosine of 2x with 1 minus 2 sine squared. So maybe in parentheses, 1 minus 2 sine squared of x times cosine minus. Now we'll replace the sine of 2x with 2 sine cosine. Uh, I won't do too much work in this first step. This is all over a cosine. We are trying to show that it's equal to 1 minus 4 sine squared. I can barely fit it it's next to all my notes. OK, the next operation, we're going to factor out cosine. Cosine of x is a part of both of these terms. Let's factor it out. And what's going to be left is we're going to have, in the first term, 1 minus 2 sine squared minus, check it out we have 2 sine squared of x. 
and we are pretty much done, my friends. Check it out. What's look what's gonna happen? Oh, we're trying to check this equal to one minus four sine squared, which it is. Because look, the cosines cancel out, and you're left with one minus two sine squared minus two sine squared. That's one minus four sine squared. This is a beast of a problem. This is one that uh, you know, if I was teaching a pre-calc class and I was doing a unit on trig identities, this one might be on the final exam or it might be a difficult example we look at in class, but I would not expect this to be like a rudimentary, run-of-the-mill, ordinary problem that ordinary people can do. Not to say that I'm flexing too hard or anything, just like, uh, you can handle this, it's, it's not terrible. I'm just saying that it's beyond the scope of AP Calculus if you're concerned. So, if you just followed along with my video and you kind of fell, fell you saw the steps and said, okay, I can, I can see how I can do that, then that's where I want you to be, my friends. Hey. We made it through another one of these videos. Honestly, there's only two more left in this series. I'm, I'm going to miss it when it's all over. Aww. But you know what? I got a whole year of AP Calculus with your group next year, and I can't wait. So, hey, I'm proud of you for taking the class. Don't forget, you're awesome. You can totally do this. You got it in the bag, my man. You're great. I will see you in the next video.